I get tan like you are, Joe. I'm looking good like a team. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'll be a little darker too. Yeah, I see it. We need a monitor for the. Uh, I gotta bring out the camel country. No, no, we gonna do this. Yeah. I want you to do the. Camel, you play golf. Do the. Uh, hey, come on, bring it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, it affected me a lot. You, if you don't know me and Chris story, Chris was my roommate in college. We were best friends. Um, I got him tattooed on my neck right now. It's R.I.P. R.I.P. Chris Henry one five. Um, and um, it hurt me. I couldn't even go to the funeral, but it, it also changed me as a person. Because me and Chris had a talk, I think, three months before he passed away. And all we was talking about, man, we got to get back to where we was, man. We got to get back to where we was, you know. And um, tragic accident happened. Um, uh, it, it, it was a sad day. Were you for a like lot of Chris Henry in a sense that you, I had an image, I didn't know him, I don't know you till now, but I had a sense he was like crazy. He was out of control. And his behavior in the back of a pickup truck. And, you know, could that have been Adam Jones? Easily. Circumstances you gone through with women, Easily. Th things in that character. Any at any point you could have been, you could have been at that funeral. Easily. Um, that's why I say um, I'm just happy to be here, man. And I, I thank God every day. And I, I don't take life for granted. Um, don't take football for granted. Um, and I just try to live life to the fullest and keep a smile on Talk my face. Talk about the crazy stuff, Adam Jones. Renting out the top floor of the Fountain Blue Hotel and the money. Talk about that. Oh, it was a time I was 21 years old, and um, I had just got $19 million. Nine, how much? $19 million. Well, $19 million, and you were 21? Yeah. $19 million? Yeah. And you're 21? Yeah. What happened? Um, It was typical inner city kid, never been around no money, never had a bank card. <laughs> Can you imagine a kid that never had a bank card? You say, hey, here go a card. It's never going to run out. <laughs> so, well, what'd you do with that $21 million? I, tr I tried to run it out, but, uh, you know... Um, Thank God I, I'm in the situation I'm in, man. Cars, I'm, I'm, women, top floors of the Fountain Blue Hotel. Whatever you, cars, whatever you can name. Drugs? It pretty much, no, nah, not too much money, more about the drugs. Probably a, a lot of alcohol, though. Drinking? A lot of alcohol. Well, that's a drug, man. That's a serious yeah, drug. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a lot, too. But, so you um, went through $21 million? I didn't go through the whole 21 million, but I went through most of it. Over how many years did it take you to get rid of it? Um, I would say about four years, four and a half. So you're talking four or five million a year. Yeah. Went through it. Yeah. Went through it. Yeah. Now, what did you learn from that? I learned that was the most, the, the <laughs> ignorance thing <laughs> that I've ever done in my whole entire life. And that's why I try to speak to the young kids and tell them, man. and Like Baby Hawk. And, and realize, like, yo, this money only coming for so long. So start putting something to the side. You know, you can have fun, but certain stuff, it shouldn't even happen. And um, I wish I had somebody that can tell me. And my biggest point. When I got my money was like, I had no one except like my coaches, like literally. So my mindset was like, look, I've came this far, all the way through college. Ain't nobody sent me or my mama no checks, no nothing. You look and poor. You I look made poor. it to this far. So now how I'm going to listen to Blow Joe that ain't even helped me through the struggle or nothing. Having been none none of the days of it, that I haven't had no uh, milk, <laughs> no candy, <laughs> now, now you got having to send my mama 19. half of my Pell Grant home, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. And so at okay, some point, right. well, when you were falling, and, and and I was on the radio, Seg Man, who's always ripping on you. I'm always defending the Pac Man. With Seg Man, Dad said oh. he's going to be here. He's always ripping on. I said he's going to be about, fine. What lying. is it when you hit rock bottom? And you went into that well and you hit third at the bottom. What was it that caused you to rebound when so many don't? Because people like you, and, 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 and I love it. I have nothing against you. You know, I still, we're still friends. Yeah. But it actually motivated me to prove everybody wrong. Because like, everybody had this picture of me like I was just a, a maniac. But nobody get to see the loving and caring father I am. A, a, a great friend. Um, a great husband to be to my fiance um the best son to my mom um you know like i tell people i've been paying my mom bills since i was 15 years old yeah is there a reason was there a person an event so many fall in that well and then bricks fall on top they can't get out why did why did adam pacman jones rebound when many young blacks out of urban communities with little or no formal education, with all the money in the world and the girls and the alcohol and the drugs and the top floor of the Fountain Blue Hotel, fancy cars, you go blow it all, agents, girlfriends, fraternity suits, everything. Why Why did you come back and so many don't? Well, it's a, it's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. Um, like I said, when I, when I got the money, I lost all respect for the money. You get what I'm saying? And I wasn't raised like that. 
So I was I was in the projects and everything, but I was raised respectful. Hey, your grandma. You call Mister, not no. Hey, how you doing, Tom? You it's Mister Tom to you. I'm like I'm talking about you will get smacked in your face <laughs> if you called a grown up by their first name in Brown. my household. Like if my grandma, you could be on the other side of the project. If she hear you call somebody James and his name is Mister James, oh it it, it was ugly. going down. So but you had that call from your grandmother. Yeah, and and a lot of things happened during the time. You know, um, meeting great people with, with the, the, my person that I talk to now every day. Um, with the Jerry Jones and and showing me and. It didn't work out there with me in Dallas, but I learned a lot from the situation. What and did he teach you in Dallas? Really, time and patience. Um, loyalty? Not, he, te he taught me no loyalty. I wouldn't say that. But he did teach me a lot about time and patience and the oh, business wow. aspect of things. Whereas in, I had forgot that. All is the all of this is a business. You get what I'm saying? And Talk to Mike Brown. You gotta carry yourself like a business. You get what I'm saying? And with meeting the Browns and the Coach Lewis and and channeling all my energy into doing something positive with the boot camps. And now I'm back to feeling like, oh man, it feels so so good to make these kids smile and go take these kids shopping instead of going out hanging out all night, being an asshole to people, like but you know, you live and you learn and you grow and um I've gotten older, and uh, I, I'm thankful for, for all the experience and why I've came. You know, I got a lot of learning to do, but I'm nowhere, 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 near, nowhere near where I was. Will you be the daddy to your kids that your daddy wasn't you? Did he teach you what not to be with a child? No, 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 no. I never, my dad died when I was at a young age, so I, I never really had the dad in my household you know um, he wasn't a memory to you at all no nah. well i'm saying he was a memory because he's my dad but as far as being a father figure taking me to the park you know doing homework with me painting pictures with me um riding a go-kart with me um i never had that and um, i try to I express the love and and not just buy my kids everything but i mean be there go to parents day at 6.30 in the morning with him when I know I got to be somewhere at 7.45. So um, that life, Pac-Man is dead and buried except between the white lines. That's it. You can have it. Um, I, I'm, I'm content where I'm at right About now. About four or five months ago, you know, my wife's a, a pellet judge. And we're sitting there at Chang's in Norwood. And I'm sitting in a booth. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you walk in. My yeah. wife doesn't know who you are. And I said, that's Pac-Man Jones. And Penny's an appellate judge. She's all... Now, what are you talking about? I said, he's a football player. Who's he play for? I said, the Bengals. I said, now watch this. I thought you were going to be like a big shot kind of a jerk. You sat at a table. You had a woman with you. I assume your fiance. Yeah. You had this little girl. Her hair looked great. She sat there. And you spent the whole time, like, over-parenting this little child. You, you're making sure the child was fed correctly. And, and kid, he had something on the lip. And you got up and took I was amazed. And she, he, you know, my, Penny said to me, you know, he's a pretty good dad. I said, I'm amazed that that's Pac-Man Jones. I had the stereotype of you, you know, because of the dreads and the money and the, and, the, uh, and, and the lawsuits and the drugs and the alcohol and the girls and the, and I said, but that wasn't you. So you changed somehow and it wasn't Marvin Lewis, was it Mike Brown, was it your grandmother? What was the person that changed you? It was all of them man. Um, and the city of Cincinnati. Um, how, how did Cincinnati play in that? Man, it slowed things down a lot for me. It's, it have been great, um, family-wise, the support, the support here in the city. Um, the person that I talk to every week, uh, as far as my screen, have been unbelievable. Um, and like I said, the Browns, the whole organization, Coach Lewis, Coach Zim, and um, I'm content now. You know, um, as in far as life, um, I have no problems. As in, do you have three more years left in you? I got six, uh, how, if you how, ask you me. Like 28, 29, how old are you? I'm 29. 29, but you live life like you're 49. Uh, I mean, you went through a lot of stuff. Well, as you would say, I went through a lot of stuff. But body-wise, I, I think my body have held up pretty good. Um, I haven't took too many bangs on my body. Um, I've never even broken a lid. I had the one neck surgery. Um, but um, I take it, good care of my body. And Goodell suspended you for a while, too. You're oh, gone. yeah. Yeah, he did, and um, that was a big part of the change, too, you know. Um, what was it like to have it and lose it? Because you don't know the differential. You, you know, the worst thing, and I used to tell people, like, um, when I left Tennessee, I used to tell Lindell and, and um, uh, Vince, like, bro, 
don't look at what the, what these folks done to me and take it as a joke. You know what I'm saying? Because, and they was thinking, well, you know, Pat got everything in the world. He cool. But the worst miserable thing is when you're in your prime of your career and you know you're supposed to be out there and you, you, you and it's, it, it kills you. I mean, word can't even express how I felt the two years that I was out of football and which was, could have been some of the prime time of my years, which, you know, um, I'm thankful because I had two years to rest, but I, 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 I it's no words that can express how, how bad I was feeling that I couldn't play football. You don't know what you have until you lose it. You're right. And, um, you that's why, it. that's why I don't take it for granted. Um, I take nothing for granted no more, you know? Well, I wish you the best. You're here at least three more years. And you've slowed down. No more the high life at the Fountain Blue Hotel. No more the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. You're in Cincinnati, and you're in a team. In yeah. the city. This, you know, I could live anywhere, and I love living in my hometown of Cincinnati. This is great. I love you too, here, man. You know, um, you always can take a trip for a weekend to go anywhere you want to, but home and, and base of being here, um, majority. Um, I'm talking out of 30 days, 25 days out of 30. This is a great place to be. Why don't you come with me to Kenwood Country Club? What Why are we going to do there? there for brunch? brunch? Bring your family for brunch. You ever, ever been to Kenwood Country Club? Haven't been there. It's right over there. What the hell? Kenwood Country Club, the whitest white people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're right there at Kenwood Country Club. I, I, I won't invite our trail, but would you come with me to brunch? Uh, Can we do tomorrow? Tomorrow? You know, the brunch is on Sunday. We got to do a Sunday brunch. <laughs> All right, for, Sunday is cool. Sunday, you bring your I, wife. Bring I'll the be baby. here Sunday. No, I'll bring the wife and the baby. Do it this Sunday because I'm going to be in my home in Naples. Oh, my Florida. God. <laughs> <laughs> you, Next you, Sunday you, is like Easter. Man, I'm about to make Easter Sunday. No, I can't do Easter because I'm going to be. How Sunday after that? All right, Sunday after Art Easter. Artro, you give me his number. Will okay. you give me his number? We plead the fifth. Oh, right. yeah, we'll get you. Number. We joke. I, I never got one of those invitations, so right now, I mean, <laughs> I, I, you got a whole other issue. I want to walk into Kenwood Country Club with you. That would be and, funny. And your, and your fiance. That, that would be funny. Take pictures. I want to get pictures. <laughs> Kenwood Country Club. All right, that would be great, man. You'll love it there, man. That'd Maybe you'll great, join. Man. We need social members. You want okay. to be a social member at Kenwood Country Club? Might think about that. Wait, I like here. golfing, though. Do you play golf? Yeah, I'm pretty we're, decent. Are you? the best third. I'm pretty. I'm been the club champion a few times. Oh, I ain't that good. No, well, no, I'll, no I'll play for some money then. But, but <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be a member at Kenwood Country Club, you're a member. You're in. All right, I'm in. You're in. Yeah. But Art Troll, would you come? So we're in. We're all in. Yeah, baby, baby Hawk. Baby Hawk, you got to be in too. Cut your mic off, Baby Hawk. Baby Hawk. Baby Hawk. This is, the, yeah. this is as many black people as you've ever had in this studio. <laughs> right now, there's four. I'm in my New York studio all the time. No, no York if you're studio. black out there, word up. It's I me, Pac Man, and Baby Hog. <laughs> Meet us at the Kid with Country Club. I want to see it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Out. Out. Adam, man. You're not meeting Pac Man. Oh, no, no, no. no. Adam's coming. Hey, I thought man. we were going to All of you invited to the We're not on the field. All of you, I'm going to pay for everything. I'm going to walk in with all my black friends. <laughs> they don't think it's a show. They're going to be like, where's the camera? This got to be a joke. <laughs> I, I, I want to see the other members when we walk in. That's all I want to see. I, I'm serious. Man. I'm serious. I, I, I bet you they'll love us. And, and they will. April 6th. All right. April 6th. We got a deal. April 6th. Uh, it's high right. noon at Kenwood Country Club brunch. Everybody be it's there. Right. Kenwood Country Club. That's it. For brunch. Baby April 6th. Hartrell and Adam. Formerly known as Pac-Man Jones. All the yeah. brothers and sisters out there. Brothers? April 6th. No, no, just you three. No, no. <laughs> Come on, Bill. No, 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 no. You got a lot of no, no, no. up to. You got two. John, John Wayne's still up in here. You ain't got no black people on the wall here, man. Well, uh, we got Can you hang my we picture in here? Naked chicks, though. You like them, don't you? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I bleed the fifth on that. I drank a fifth. Okay, I don't remember nothing. He took a fifth. Can, can, can we get a picture of Pac sure. and Baby Hawk in here? Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's get a picture right here. We'll put it on the blog site. All right, First. sound good. But don't sound forget, good. Sunday, April 6th at high noon. Trust me, we won't forget. Oh, we don't be there. We'll be if there. we do forget, oh, we, we know what will happen. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Hey, well, thanks for you. having us, man. Thanks, brother. Adam, you're the best. Artrell and Baby Hawk, good luck to you this year. Good really luck. appreciate it. Thank you. Who's better, Baby Hawk or Adam? Uh, Baby Hawk is better. Adam's better. Better Hawk. Say it again. Baby Hawk. Baby Hawk. Artrell, you decide. I'd say baby, baby hawk. That would be Austin. Uh, <laughs> and Adam's one. little girl. They're going to be way better. They're you know. fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fast. They, they already run running around. Yeah. April 6th. Yeah. Don't forget. Yep. April 6th. Really? Like, at Kenwood Country Club. Kenwood Country Club. April 6th. On 700 WLW. Yes, sir.
I'm serious about that. Yeah, I'm that is going to be a lot. I'm talking before that, but uh, it's a brunch <laughs> deal. Yeah. 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 All the brunch is at the yard. No, 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 no,